Next.js 13 is making using custom fonts way easier. Let's take a look. I'll start by running create next app to set up a new Next.js 13 application. We'll use TypeScript, ESLint. We'll just use the defaults for now. Okay, we can jump into this new directory and open this up. And we'll open up our repository here. It's just a standard Next.js 13 starter template. We can npm run dev to start up our local dev server. And then in the browser, we can go to localhost 3000 and see our brand new application. Now, by default, this is using the standard system font stack. So I'm on Mac, it's using the Apple system font here, which is San Francisco. This works pretty well, but it's gonna be different if I'm on a Windows machine. We wanna have the same look and feel across all of our different devices, and maybe we wanna have a custom font that represents our brand. So you might go out to Google Fonts or another font registry like Typekit, and say, okay, I wanna use the Roboto font. Now, how do I actually get this inside of my application? You can scroll down and pick the font weights that you want. Maybe you wanna download this file on your machine, or maybe you wanna say, hey, I want regular and bold. So let's take this link tag and just throw it into the head of our HTML document. So I pulled up our index route here on the left, which is using next head to change the HTML head and add some meta tags. Now, yeah, I could copy paste these links put them in the head, go open up my global styles, and you know, let's say we wanna throw Roboto on here instead. This technically works, but you're gonna notice that it comes with some issues. The fallback font loads, which is the system font here, and then Roboto is used. Now, if you have a slow internet speeds, for example, if this was on 3G, that would be a lot more painful than it is right now on fast internet. Further, we have to make requests to Google Fonts to actually go retrieve this external font file every single time. Wouldn't it be great if we could automatically self-host the Rovato font on our Next.js server and automatically figure out what the fallback font should be so that it perfectly matches and has the least amount of layout shift? Well, I have good news because that's exactly what the new font optimization inside of Next.js does. So let me just reset things back here. I'll get rid of the Roboto font inside of my global styles and I can go back to our index route here and also remove manually adding the links inside of the head. Let's start using the new font optimization inside of Next.js 13. To start off, we're gonna go back to our terminal and we're going to install next font. Now this is a separate package because there's quite a few different Google fonts that can be included and we didn't wanna put that all in the main Next.js package. So I'll uh, restart our dev server here. We now have our new package and inside underscore app in the pages directory, we can actually import a font from Google fonts. In this instance, I'm gonna use Roboto. We can define a new instance of Roboto here, subset the font down to just the Latin characters. Again, this could be different if you have a different language, for example and we get to specify what weights we want. So maybe we want 400, maybe we want 400 and 700, for example. So now we have this instance of Roboto. What we wanna do is go down to our component here and we're actually gonna wrap this in, let's say uh, a main tag or, or something like that. And we're going to take Roboto.ClassName and apply this auto-generated class to our entire document. So if I go ahead and hit save here, you're going to notice on the right here, it just updated and we get our new font. Now, if I open up our dev tools, I could actually go and inspect this font here. I see that yes, it is using Roboto. It's got the funky class name here because it's the automatically generated one. I can also go to our main element here and I do see the font family of Roboto as well as the fallback font added correctly into our document. Now, this doesn't have to be Roboto. This could really be any font from Google Fonts that we want. So if I go back to our underscore app folder, I could change this to enter, for example. I could do IBM Plex. I could do really any font that I want. So let's do enter and I'll change this here as well too. Now, this is a variable font, so I actually don't even need to specify weights, which I would recommend using variable fonts if you can. It's also gonna help you get the best performance. So we can remove that. We'll keep the subset to Latin, and I can hit save, and we see our new font file over here on the right, or our new font being applied. It's really that easy. Now, while I only showed Google Fonts here, it's important to note that this could also work with a local font file too. The import path looks slightly different, and the way that you define your font is you have to have a source that points to where this file is at. 
but it's basically the same thing. One final note if you're using Tailwind CSS is that you'll wanna actually use a CSS variable instead. So let me just quickly show that. On your font that you've defined, you can use variable and then give a name for your variable. So maybe we want font enter, for example. Then on your class name here, we're gonna change this to a string template and we're gonna say enter.variable to apply that variable and then font sans. Finally, I would modify my Tailwind config to say, hey, for the font family, for sans, just use the CSS variable of font enter. Also, if you're using the app directory, which is in beta, this also works there as well too. Again, it's pretty much the same thing, but you're applying it to the root layout to have it work for your entire application. All right, that's all it takes to start using font optimization inside of Next.js 13 to get better page load performance as well as less layout shift. Give it a shot and let me know what you think. By the way, if you wanna see more videos on Next.js, feel free to subscribe, give a thumbs up. Thanks.